Number eight, John Lydon versus Judge Judy. Wyatt changed his mind and he walked out on me that night. Not only did John Lydon, also known as Johnny Rotten, punk legend and former frontman of the Sex Pistols, appear on a 90s episode of Judge Judy, he won. How and why Lydon ended up on the show is a mystery, but that didn't stop him from stating his case in an orderly and professional way. There's no I don't point in me wasting money on separate individual hotel rooms when I'm perfectly able to share. The case involved one of Lydon's former drummers suing him for breach of contract and assault and battery, charges that were ultimately dismissed. In the end, Lydon can't help but crack a joke at the plaintiff's expense after Judge Judy rules in his favor. Fairly obvious conclusion. Number seven, drunk lady impression. Why did she leave? Okay, this one is just weird. When defendant Dr. Noel Howell is asked to present his case, he appears to be an intelligent, well-spoken individual. Her action became so bizarre, it was hilarious at times, dangerous at times. However, when Judge Judy asks him to give her an example of the plaintiff's drunken behavior, things get a little strange. And she was like, Why? The defendant's impression is straight up insane and begs the question, has this guy ever seen a drunk person before? Howell's bizarre impression was so crazy, we're amazed Judge Judy didn't immediately rule in favor of the plaintiff. Yes, Your Honor, and it was behaving like that, and I was like, Melissa, what's going on? Number six, sibling rivalry. It won't be in that house either. Can't we all just get along? These two siblings can't seem to keep their emotions in check after Judge Judy hands down her verdict. As they begin to exit the courtroom, the sister starts hurling insults at her brother laying down a number of hilarious quips in her thick southern drawl. Where's the nice tractor at? Man, Go on. The sister is a hot mess, prattling on about Tom's tractor before threatening to bust her brother. Step out. Step out. Bust you, dude. The sister is ultimately escorted out of the room, leaving her brother and the rest of the courtroom in utter disbelief. Bye, Stacy. Yeah, bye. You won't bye. be in that you house. Bye, you have a good life, bro. Yeah, you won't be in that house. Bye. Number five, guy with ten kids. Tell me all your kids. What kind yeah. of kids do you have? I have about ten kids. The court finds the defendant cringeworthy. In the span of only a couple of minutes, this defendant claims to be the father to ten children, of which he is uncertain how many mothers there are. He then goes on to make a horribly misguided joke, implying that one of the mothers is Judge Judy's daughter. Uh, about four of them, including uh, your daughter. What are you talking about? <laughs> It was just a joke, man. Finally, he tries to beat Judge Judy at her own game. Quipping, this might be your show, but it's my episode. I'm not this making This might be your show, but I'm, this is my episode. I'm... Talk about bold. In the end, it's Judge Judy who gets the last laugh, as she scolds the man like he's a misbehaving schoolboy. Perhaps if he stayed in school a little longer instead of stayed out of the bedroom, you'd have... Cell phone in the process. He was crouching down by the pool like, like this, like this. When asked to recount what happened from her perspective, she wastes no time, accidentally admitting her own guilt in the process. Oh, I had no idea she had her iPhone. I felt awful after it happened. As if that weren't bad enough, she then goes on to answer Judge Judy's rhetorical question about rocket science, proving that she's not the brightest bulb in the tanning bed. It's girls like this that give blondes a bad name. What is rocket science? Rocket science is when the scientists find out things about space. Number three, twist ending. I don't believe that she caused these injuries to herself. You can't handle the tooth. What starts out as a seemingly innocuous case between two dental workers turns into one of the best whodunits in Judge Judy history. The plaintiff, Kenyatta Owens, attempts to sue the defendant, Angel McDaniel, after the latter reported inappropriate pictures of the plaintiff that had been posted online. The case takes a dark turn when it's revealed that McDaniel suffered injuries after an alleged altercation with Owens. I don't she answer questions, so Miss Owens. Teachers. Your case of is course. Dismissed. But just when things appear to be going the defendant's way, the case ends in a twist, as Judge Judy realizes that McDaniel is lying. Remember, the case isn't over until the final drop of the gavel. Do you have a lawsuit pending against Dr. I do. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $5,000, that's all. Number two, dog in court. You? You want to go get the dog? If you're looking for your feel-good moment of the week, this is it. This episode focuses on the quarrel between two people claiming ownership over a lost dog. The defendant claims to have purchased the dog from a woman on the street, while the plaintiff maintains that the dog was his and that it had simply run away a few days earlier. However, when Judge Judy demands that the dog be brought into the courtroom, it quickly becomes apparent who the real owner is. While Judge Judy is known for handing out justice, it is rarely this satisfying or adorable. <laughs> yes, that's you. That's you. Before 
we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I love this one. Are we understanding each other? Yes. You're an idiot! Number one, the worst plea ever. What I was in your wallet? It was 50 bucks. Quick, what is the defendant's job during a court case? If you answer to plead their innocence, congratulations. You're already smarter than this guy. After a teenage girl claims that the defendant stole her wallet, Judge Judy asks her to list what was inside the wallet at the time of the theft. I thought that... When she mentions that the wallet contained an earpiece, one of the defendants is quick to point out that there was no earpiece in the wallet, thus proving that he stole it. This has got to be the easiest verdict Judge Judy has ever delivered. Judging for the plaintiff for the amount of $500, that's what I